Hi everyone, Nicholas Devine, Assistant Professional out here at Lake Caranup Country Club and back with another club review. And like I said a couple of days ago, I had the Callaway Rogue Fairway Woods. And here I have them with me. I have the Callaway Rogue Standard Model and the Sub-Zero Model. So hang out for this video and we'll check them out. So, Rogue 3 wood. I have it in the Sub-Zero and the standard one as I just said. But unlike the Epic, which was an Epic fairway wood, Rogue now brings jailbreak technology, but now also in the hourglass technology. And when I mean hourglass, they've refined the jailbreak technology so they've been able to redistribute the weight into different sections of the head so they can get a little bit more MOI and a little bit more forgiveness. Now, these heads are slightly bigger than the Epic range and you can see that from the images coming up on the screen right now. But it's only very slight. I mean, to the naked eye, you can't really see it too much, but I know that it is slightly bigger. Now, Sub-Zero, of course, is gonna be your low ball flighting three wood and your standard one's gonna be your high ball flighting material, uh, fairway wood. But they are both going to fly higher than the Epic models, simply because of the fact these woods here are to replace the Fusion and the XR range of fairway woods. And because they do that, they are supposed to be a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more helpful to the average golfer. And that's why the Rogue has been brought out, is to actually bring a top fairway wood with all the class and technology of the Epic, but in a fairway wood that everybody in the golfing world can hit. Now I've got the fairway woods here in two models um, and the Sub-Zero I've got the Evenflow Project X shaft and in the standard model I've got the Synergy 60 gram Ardilla shaft. Um, both of them are stiff shafts and both of them come in, well hold on, the Synergy 60 grams and the Evenflow 75 grams. Now I'm more aimed towards the Sub-Zero model and when I got the Epix the Sub-Zero model was just flew a little bit too low for me and I ended up switching to the standard model. But I'm more interested in myself personally in hitting the Sub-Zero in the Rogue simply because of the fact that it's slightly a bigger head so I'm expected to get a bit more ball flight but I also want the punch off the face that a Sub-Zero model brings. Standard model is going to obviously fly a lot higher as you can see here the difference between the two if I bring them up and you see the uh, pictures coming up on the screen there. The standard model has the weight at the back, Sub-Zero has the weight at the front so if the weight's further forward the you tend to get a little bit more punch off the face. Now, putting them down personally as my preference, they look better than the Epic. I wasn't a big fan of the green of the Epic, but I like this aqua blue that they have here in the Rogue. And to me, it is a sexier looking head, but I'm also expecting these to go a lot further than the Epic, which they actually say they do because of this refined jailbreak technology. Anyway, enough talking. Um, I'll hit both. Um, give my opinion on both but again like I said um, I'm expecting the Sub-Zero to fly lower and go up a little bit hotter and a little bit further. Now when they come up on the screen um, Sub-Zero will come up in white and the standard model will come up in orange. Um, other than that just remember I am using the Skytrack ball launch monitor to grab all the ball data and I'm using NXT Tour S yellow golf balls simply because that's the golf ball that we use out here on the range at Lake Caranup and it's a good ball. Anyway, like I said, enough talking, a little bit more hitting. Okay, like I said, Sub-Zero first. I'll hit four shots with this, and then I'll move on to the standard model. Now, like I said, the one thing that's definite when I put this down on the ground, it was bigger than the Epic Sub-Zero I used to have. So like I said, I'm expecting this one to fly a little bit higher, and I'm also expecting it to come off a little bit hotter because of the jailbreak technology. But I also love the color of this Evenflow shaft and it feels really good at 75 grams. And as expected, yes, slightly high ball flight, but that was quite easy to hit in comparison to my Epic. And that's where I think the Epic went wrong for the average golfer, I should say the Epic Sub-Zero and also the Epic Standard. I just felt like when I fit it, I couldn't get it off the ground for most people. Um, but now that they've introduced the Rogue, um, it should be a lot easier. Smash that one too. 
That went further than my normal drives. And I hate three woods. Okay, I didn't hit that one too well. As you can see, it's gone slightly right. But, you know, it still felt amazing off the face. Anyway, I'm gonna hit a quick two more, um, and then we'll switch over to the standard, and then we'll have a look at the numbers of both and review both of them. One thing for sure, it's definitely for me going to replace my Epic. Anyway, let's switch to the standard model. Okay, so here we go. We're into the standard model now. Now, I'm going to actually hit my Epic Rogue, uh, Epic 3 wood and the Rogue 3 wood in the standard models just so we can also get a comparison between the two. Now, as you see the images coming up on the screen again, and I'm just bringing this back up again. The one thing that I did notice the difference between Rogue and Epic is when I put the Rogue down on the ground, it actually looks like the face sits slightly open. Whereas when I put the Epic down on the ground, it sits slightly closed. The other thing that's a big difference is soul interaction. I actually feel like the Rogue has a lot more soul interaction in comparison to Epic. Now for me, both those features breed confidence for me because I know now that no matter where I hit it on the face with the Rogue, I'm going to be able to make contact. And because the face is slightly open, I feel like I can swing at it a little bit harder, so then I can hit it harder. So those two factors is probably a big thing and a big plus for the average club golfer. Having a slightly open face and also having slightly uh, more soul interaction is going to breed confidence for the average golfer. Epic, only a little bit of soul interaction, and as you can see from the images on the screen, and also the fact that the head's slightly smaller means that this club doesn't get up in the air and also because this sits slightly closed it probably scared a lot of people out of buying this three wood the rogue is definitely a three wood out there for your high handicapper or your low handicapper and for me it's a big plus as a club professional to get a three wood that sits slightly open has a lot of soul interaction so it's definitely a three wood for anybody to check out but anyway i'm going to hit the rogue first um, and then I'm going to hit the Epic. Now unfortunately I can't swap the shafts out because the other big feature of the Rogue is it's a glued in head. Um, so whatever shaft you get or whatever setting you get, that's as good as it gets. Whereas with the Epic you've got that adjustability through the neck. So just make that remind, you know, keep that in mind when you're buying the Rogue. It is a glued in head. There is no adjustability through the hosel. Anyway, I'll hit Rogue first, then I'll hit Epic. For a first shot, that felt really good. But straight away, a little bit shorter than the Sub-Zero. Ball flight came out a little bit lower on that one, which is unusual. I'm expecting this one to go a little bit higher. All right, let's hit number two. Okay, that's more the ball flight I'm expecting. That one was a little bit higher. But let's have a look at the numbers. Definitely, definitely shorter. But not much difference in ball flight at this point in time.
but it's definitely looking like the Sub-Zero for me. I just like that little bit more punch off the face. But not bad, and this is very easy to get off the ground. So for the average club golfer, this is a really good fairway wood. Anyway, last one, and then I'll switch to the Epic. Now, I can honestly say I haven't really hit any of these three woods with this fairway wood that well, but the numbers haven't been too bad. And for a couple of shots, which I felt like I hit really bad, they're not too far offline. So, like I said, this is a very, very good three wood for your average golfer, or any golfer, to be quite honest. Anyway, switch to the Epic, and you'll actually see this come up as green on the screen, which is quite, quite convenient for the Epic. Anyway, switch over to the Epic, I'll hit four shots with that, and then we'll look at the numbers. Well, that's not a good start. <laughs> but the distance wasn't too bad. All right, three more. I'll just quickly get through these three and then we'll quickly have a chat and look at the numbers. All right, last one with the Epic. The one thing's for sure, but with the Epic, because that face sits slightly closed, you can actually see that there's a definite draw shape on every shot that I hit with the Epic. So that's kind of a plus point, whereas you can see with the row, I could leak it a little bit right because of the slightly open face. But I still prefer to have a slightly open face because then I feel like I can get at it a little bit harder. Anyway, there's the shots. I'm just gonna pull up the numbers and we'll have a chat about that. Okay, so now let's have a look at the numbers. Now, first of all, club head speed, 94, 96, 93. I try to keep it as close as possible as I could to each other. Wasn't that successful, but close enough. Overall distance, 230 for the Sub-Zero, which is what I expected, and you could actually see that it came off quite hot off the face. Um, and then you've got the two standard models. Now, funny enough, the Epic did outdo the standard Rogue model. Not only in was the Clubhead speed slower in the Epic, it actually went, it went further than a quicker Clubhead speed in the Rogue. So that's a bit funny. But the big thing, the big plus with the Rogue and the one thing that I can definitely say about the Rogue, it was easier to hit. I hit a couple of shots with the Epic, and like I said, didn't breed too much confidence in me when the head sits slightly closed and doesn't have too much soul interaction. And my first shot was fairly low and a little bit hooky. But other than that, the other, the other three shots were quite good. Now, ceiling height, which is a big one here, uh, and like I expected, the Sub-Zero did in the Rogue, did go lower than the Rogue standard model. But then funny enough, the Epic went lower than both, which is what I expected. Because the Rogue's there to replace the Fusion, the XR range, and the head slightly longer, so the CG location's back, I did expect the balls to come up a little bit higher on the Rogue models, and as you can see from those numbers, it did. Spin numbers were quite high, 3129, 
in the Sub-Zero. I'd like that to be a little bit lower, but again, it is a fairway wood there to help the average golfer get the ball up in the air, and it does do that. Um, and then as you can see, as we jump to the standard Rogue, the numbers go up even further. And then when we go back to the Epic uh, three wood, it drops down again. Now, overall, has the Rogue filled a hole that Callaway needs to fill with regards to uh, having jailbreak technology? Yes, they have. Uh, the Rogue is a very good three wood, um, and I would recommend to any level of golfer, whether you're a scratch figure player or a high handicapper, it's definitely a fair way to look at. So there you have it, Callaway Rogue. Make sure you like, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on ND Golf.